The archive collection dates right back to 1759 when we hold the original lease that a young Arthur Guinness signed on the brewery here at St James's Gate on New Year's Eve in 1759. My name is Evelyn Colgan and I manage the Guinness Archives which is based at the Guinness Storehouse at the St James's Gate Brewery in Dublin. So the Guinness Archive is based here in the Guinness Storehouse and it's one of the largest corporate collections and indeed one of the largest brand collections in the world. So the location here at the brewery at St James's Gate was really, really important. First of all, it was very close to the newly built Grand Canal that was only just being built in the 1700s. And then a hundred years later, when the brewery expanded the brewery site right down to the River Liffey, it got access to the Liffey and therefore was able to apply Liffey barges for the first time. And within the archive collection and the collections here the visitors can see within the storehouse, we have some lovely models of both the Guinness barges and then also equally of the Guinness ships. The Guinness barges began in the 1870s when the brewery built a jetty at Victoria Quay for the first time. And the barges used to, we used to take the wooden casks full of stout from Victoria Quay right down to the mouth of the Liffey in Dublin port and indeed brought the empties back up to the brewery again. There were two different types of barges. The earlier barges were all named after rivers around Ireland. Then in 1919, a new type of barge, which was called the Farmley type, was introduced. And that was named after locations around Dublin city. So for example, you had the Farmley, the Castle Knob, and it's that second type of barge that is very much within, um, certainly within living people's living memory, certain generations of Dubliners always remember the barges going up and down the River Liffey and they've very much been part of Dublin culture. James Joyce refers to the puffball of steam coming off the Guinness Barge for example as he's crossing O'Connell Street on, on Bloomsday. They were really well engineered. The Guinness engineers designed them so that the funnel could be lowered to go under the bridges um, on the River Liffey. And as I say, they would have met the Guinness ships that would have been docked in Dublin Port, either on Customs House Quay or on St John Rogerson's Quay. The very first Guinness owned ship was the WM Barclay, and she was purchased second hand by the brewery in 1913. Then in the 1930s, 1940s, the SS Guinness came into, um, came into being. And then in the 1950s, there was a fleet of ships that were known as the Guinness Ladies. So you had the Lady Gwendolyn, the Lady Gronje, the Lady Patricia, and the Miranda Guinness. The Lady Patricia was converted into a bulk liquid carrier in the 70s and actually the Miranda Guinness was the world's first bulk liquid carrier of any type of liquid around the world. The last ships there was the Lady Miranda, sorry the Miranda Guinness and the Lady Patricia and they last sailed and left Dublin Port in 1993 and that was the end of the, the ships here of the Guinness. But the Guinness Storehouse building is a really interesting and unique actually architectural building. Back in the year 2000, the building was converted into the home of Guinness to contain different visitor experiences, different exhibition areas, and of course our gravity bar. Um, and we welcome people from all over the world.